So recently I uploaded a video about the all-in-one home automation version 2 using Rainmaker and after uploading that video, I got a lot of requests in my DMs like, Hey Sachin, is that project compatible with Home Assistant server or not? <laughs> well, I know there are a lot of active Home Assistant users in my subscriber base and to help all those active Home Assistant users, I'm making this video to teach you how to integrate that project in Home Assistant along with one really useful twist. And that twist is you will be able to control all those appliances over internet for absolutely free, free, free. Yes, you heard that right. So in this video, we'll be making a project of controlling four AC appliances along with speed of one AC fan, along with monitoring real time temperature and humidity data on Home Assistant server over internet for absolutely free of course. And also you'll be able to control those appliances using manual switches and manual fan regulator along with their real time feedback on Home Assistant dashboard. So yeah, that's the topic of this video. So before starting this video, if you're watching this face for the very first time, well consider subscribing this channel as I come up with these kind of home automation project tutorial videos with different different IoT platforms out there in the market. And yet that being said, Let's start with all-in-one home automation version 2 using Rainmaker hey. using Home Assistant for absolutely free. Okay, let's start with this video. Before starting the video, let me tell you one really interesting and useful feature of our sponsor LTM which is a PCB designer based software company and that feature is called as design review. Using LTM, you can add any member to your project and after that, they can highlight any fault in the schematic or can report availability of components in the inventory on the PCB to your designer so that they can visualize these components and can work upon it to provide a smooth flow of PCB production even if they both are in any corner of the world. So that's the design review feature and even you can try out this and many other features of LTM for free by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description as you'll be getting an access to free trial version using that link. Now let's start with our video. So to make this project, you'll need these all components whose list and links are mentioned in the article whose link you can easily find in the description of this video and after getting all of them, you need to connect them according to the schematic diagram. Now as we wanted to make this project more compact, we designed our own custom PCB for this project and gave its order directly to JLC PCB. So JLC PCB is a PCB manufacturing based company that provides a lot of service in PCBs and other domains like you can order the multi-layer PCBs from JLC PCB, you can use the PCB A service or called as PCB assembly service in which you will be getting all the components already shouldered on the PCB. And also they started the 3D printing service as well where you can just upload the 3D print file of your project and you'll be getting that 3D print delivered straight at your doorstep. So JLC PCB has a lot to offer for all of us and for this project we are using the PCB manufacturing service by JLC PCB and we did that by just uploading the Gerber file of our PCB project. We selected the number of PCBs and color masking. Now here I have selected the green color masking because it has the least production time. And after that I just placed the order. Now as I selected the fastest delivery option, I got the PCBs delivered within a week at my doorstep here in India. So do try out JLC PCB for your PCB related or 3D printing related services. The links are down in the description of this video. So after getting the PCBs, we one by one shouldered all the components on it and after shouldering them all, the final project looks like this. Neat and compact. Now along with the PCB, we will also need a rotary switch to control the speed of the fan and a DST11 sensor to monitor the temperature and humidity of our smart home. Now for all of those who already watched my previous Rainmaker based video must be knowing that there was a built in IR sensor along with this project. Well you are absolutely right there is a built in slot for connecting an IR sensor with it but for this particular video or this particular project based on home assistant I neglected the IR because uh, we tried a lot but we were not uh, you know, able to integrate the IR sensor or the IR remote with the ESP home of home assistant server. So we find a lot of difficulties in it. So 
if you know the solution of how we can integrate the IR remote with Home Assistant, do let me know the suggestion down in the comments. But as of now, we neglected the IR sensor and we just kept the internet and manual control features in this project only. And by the way, we are selling this through our website so you no longer need to worry about getting all the components, shouldering in it, assembling it, nothing at all. Just click the link mentioned in the description that will take you to our website and just purchase this project along with the rotary switch and the DHT11 sensor. It will be delivered directly at your doorstep. So for the home assistant part, we neglected the IR remote and the IR sensor. But if you still want the IR sensor, IR remote with this particular kit, well, you can click the next link in the description that will take you to the home assistant project page in which you'll be getting both IR remote and the IR receiver along with all the other components. It's totally up to you whether you want to buy without IR or with IR. We are open to all. So with this, we come to the end of the hardware part of the project. Now let's just jump on to the coding part. Okay, so here is my home assistant dashboard and to move forward, you need to have the ESP home and the studio code server already installed in your home assistant server. I have covered this in a lot of other videos of home assistant. So you can watch out those videos to know how to install them. And after doing that, just click on the ESP home and you can just click on the new device button. Uh, click on continue give this device a name i'll name it as esp32 only click on next i'll select the device as esp32 and we are done okay now for that click on the edit button now we will replace this code with this one now this is that same code that we have used in our first generation of all-in-one home automation project using home assistant with a little bit of modifications so what i'll do i'll cover only those modifications that i have made here uh, for the second version of our all-in-one home automation project okay so the major changes is uh first of all we have added this uh, dht11 sensor which is attached at pin 16 and this will be sending the data at an interval of five seconds you can change it according to your need your purpose okay after that we have added one more switch dedicatedly for a fan control so previous in previous version we were not having a dedicated switch for fan but in this version we have added a dedicated switch for fan which is attached at gpio 33 so we can turn off the fan and turn on the fan using that switch so yeah, these were the two changes uh, in the code as compared to the previous version. Other than that, the whole code, like every line of code is exactly the same that we have used in the previous video. So you can watch out that video to know more about this particular code. Okay. And also you can add the SID name and password of your Wi-Fi router. If you don't want to add the secrets folder. So I'll simply write the SID name, which is uh, GeoFi, SMS GeoFi. And the password is SMS uh, 234 great okay so that's the change you need to do and as you can see there is a cross sign here it's just because we haven't included the ifano2.h header file so first of all i'll save that and let you know how to include that header file i click on the close button and for that you need to have this studio code server in your home assistant platform uh okay let's just open it up Okay, so here as you can see the esp3.yaml file appeared here. Now this is the same code that we have written right now. Now here you need to click on this new file and just name this file as ifano2.h click on OK. So here is that new file and here you need to paste this much line of code while well, I'll providing all these code like both the code file in the same article. So you can copy and paste it and no need to worry about uh, any of thing. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I'll click on this save button and this is also saved. Now let's just go back to the ESP home and this uh, ESP YML file. As you can see the cross icon disappeared from here. That means the code is perfectly fine and it is now ready to be uploaded onto the ESP32 board. So I'll quickly come after connecting the ESP32 board with the raspberry pi board and now i'll click on the install button click on plug into the computer running esp home click the uh, com port and it started the uploading process so it will take some time so let's just wait for that okay as you can see the code is successfully uploaded and with this we come to the end of the coding part as well and now before testing it let us see how to convert this local area control to global area control or internet control for free of course let me show you that step okay so now let me show you how to control the home assistant appliances over internet for free and for that you have to go to settings click on add-on now here you need to search for the add-on called as tail scale and just click on the install button so it's kind of a vpn a zero config vpn that means you don't need to enter any ip address enter any config no need to do any configuration just click on install click on start and you are good to go you don't need to do anything it's really easy to use and still serves the purpose of controlling those appliances over internet as you can see we installed it successfully i'll click on show in sidebar and click on the start button okay after that we'll uh, click on the tail scale uh, menu you can say 
And here you need to click on the login button. Of course, we need to make an account here. So I'll log in with my GitHub account. I'll click on authorized tail scale and it says authorization successful. And here probably the, okay. As you can see, the page is changed and it is started advertising this node over internet via tail scale or via VPN, you can say. And as you can see, we have only one machine associated with it. Now to control uh, appliances over internet, we need to install this tail scale uh, application in that uh, uh, device from which we need to control and the good part is uh, the app for this tail scale is available for mac os ios windows linux android so it is available for all the platforms out there that means we can control using any of our devices okay so i'll show you this sample or the demo using my iphone and you can do the same for the windows android and anything okay so for that you first need to download the application so i'll start the screen recording on my smartphone now here i'll click on the app store button and here I'll search for the same app called as tail scale. Okay. And here I'll download this app. Perfect. Click on the open button. Click on get started. Uh, yes, you need to allow this because this is uh, yet using a VPN and I'll enter the password here. Click on continue to sign in. And here I'll sign in with that same account, like the same GitHub account, which I used in the uh, home assistant server. I'll click on the authorized tail scale. And we are done. Okay, so as you can see, the home assistant machine is appeared here on my smartphone and on the laptop side, we must be having, okay, as you can see, there are two devices up here. So we can control uh, this home assistant server now with the help of my smartphone as well over internet and to show you the demo, what I'll do, I'll turn off the Wi-Fi first of all, so it's no more inside the local area network. I'll open the tail scale account. I'll click here to copy the IP address. So it's copied and now I'll open my web browser. Okay, now here I will paste that IP address in colon 8123. And if I click on the go button, as you can see, there's no local area connection, no Wi-Fi connection, it's totally connected to my data network. And if it opens up, we are controlling it via internet. Let's just see, click on the go button. And as you can see, we are inside the home assistant dashboard. I can log into my home assistant server uh, by entering the credentials. As you can see, here is the home assistant server running over internet without any local area connections using stale scale for definitely absolutely free and it will work for all the devices. Okay. But make sure that uh, from the device uh, from which you want to control those appliances on that device, the tail scale app should be installed and log in with the same account. Okay. That's the only condition. There is no other condition at all. So now uh, let us install that project and let us test this whole project working live <laughs> in action. For the installation part, we did the connections between the project, appliances, switches, and the sensor according to this connection diagram. Now before testing it, let's first configure our home assistant dashboard. So here in the app, I'll first click on the edit dashboard and click on add card. Here I'll select by entity and select all the appliances from this. After that, click on continue and click on add to dashboard. After that, again, click on add card and select gates this time. I'll configure it for humidity entity and repeat the step for temperature entity as well. And that's it. After that, click on done button. And with this, we are done with the dashboard configuration. Now let's test our project in action okay so we are easily able to control the appliances via home assistant dashboard without any latency and the same goes with controlling the speed of the fan as well pretty smooth now let's test with manual switches okay so as you can see we are able to control the lights and fan and also getting the real-time feedback on the home assistant dashboard Again, for the fan to be controlled with the manual regulator, we won't be able to set the speed 3 that we have already discussed in our previous video. Otherwise, everything works pretty well. And also, we are able to monitor the real-time temperature and humidity value on the dashboard. So everything seems working pretty fine. Now let's turn off the Wi-Fi and test it with internet mode. So I'll copy the IP address of the home assistant server and paste it in my browser with the port number 8123. Now I'll log in with my home assistant account and here is our dashboard. 
as you can see we are easily able to control those appliances in real time with the same low latency that we are getting in the local area network this is superb So yeah, that was the project about controlling the appliances and monitoring sensors data over internet using Home Assistant. Well, Tailscale is really good and very easy to use, of course, for this application, but it still lacks with some of the integration. Like you can't use the voice apps here like Google Assistant and Siri. And if you want to use that as well, well, you should consider the Nabukasa a cloud platform, uh, which is from the Home Assistant group only. And that will provide all those features like controlling apps, uh, appliances and monitoring census data or internet, uh, Alexa, Google Assistant and Siri, all the integration. And well, that is not for free. Of course, it will charge you around $5 per month, I think so. And well, it's worth paying that amount if you're using Home Assistant on a regular basis because that gives us way more benefit than what I discussed right now. And hey, do you want me to make a video, like a dedicated video about how to integrate Nabukasa and what are the features that comes with it? Well, if you want me to make that, well, do let me know your suggestion in the comments of the video. If majority of you people want that video, I'll definitely consider making one for you. Other than that, we are also selling this complete project at a really attractive price through our website. So do check out the link uh, mentioned in the description of this video if you want to uh, buy one home automation project for you. And yeah, do drop a like if you really appreciate this video and got to learn something new from it. And well, that being said, I'm just ending this video here. And now just wait for my next video, then explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.